buscando a Nemo, parte 4. Al día siguiente, Gil vio que el dentista salió por la puerta. Ha llegado el momento, tiburoncín. Nadando hasta la superficie, Nemo saltó dentro del fil filtro y metió un guijarro entre los engranajes. El ventilador dejó de andar, deteniendo el fil filtro. Lo conseguí, lo conseguí, pensó. Pero cuando Nemo nadaba para escapar, el guijarro se salió y el filtro comenzó a funcionar otra vez, aspirando a Nemo hacia las aspas del ventilador. ¡Ayúdenme! gritó el pequeño. Gil arrancó una planta de la pecera y la metió en el filtro. ¡Tiburoncín, agárrate de esto! Nemo agarró la punta de la planta y la pandilla lo sacó sano y salvo. Gil decidió que no podían arriesgar nunca más la vida de Nemo. No. Esto se ha terminado. Mientras tanto, en el océano, Marlene y Dory habían logrado escapar de la explosión submarina, pero la máscara se había caído a una profunda grieta. Descendieron por ella nadando en la oscuridad, hasta que vieron una luz. Era el cebo en la antena de un malvado peje sapo. Al acercarse el pez hambriento, se iluminó el fondo del mar. Ahí estaba la máscara. De repente, Dory recordó que sabía leer el lenguaje, lenguaje humano. Malin, valerosamente, sujetó la luz del peligroso pez mientras ella leía. P. Sherman, calle Wallaby, 42, Sydney. Entonces, Malin gritó, ¡Cuidado! El peje sapo se lanzó sobre ellos, quedando atrapado entre la máscara y una gran roca. Marlene dijo que es un suspiro de alivio. Estaban con vida. All right, guys, if you've been following along here with my um, Finding Nemo reading in Spanish, I've been doing the private versus imperfect on each of the pages. This time I thought I'd do something just a little bit different. And, well, actually, it's completely different. I look at cognates that are used in the story. And uh, cognates, if you aren't sure, are words that look the same in English, and, or are words that look the same in two different languages and have the same meaning. Uh, and these are very helpful when you're trying to read something. I knew that, or I found out how useful these were when I was in college and taking some of my first ever uh, literature courses because, uh, of course, everything was in Spanish. So when I came across a word that looked like the English word, uh, I just went with it and thinking that it was a cognate. There are false cognates, words that look the same, but they mean something different. But you're going to come across a lot more cognates than you will false cognates. So I'm just going to go through this paragraph and show you... Uh, a handful of cognates that I found and um, just show you that they can be helpful when you're reading something that's in a different language. So this first paragraph here, obviously dentista uh, would be a cognate for dentist, of course. Momento uh, clearly would be for moment. Uh, filtro, which is used a few times throughout this uh, page, is clearly going to be used for filter. Uh, ventilador, while it's not exactly like the English word, but Ventilador looks like ventilator. And what's a ventilator? It's like something that blows air. So it might make you start thinking, oh, okay, fan, maybe. Uh, deteniendo is from the verb detener. Detener might make you think detain or stop, for example. So stop the filter. You could probably figure that one out, right? Uh, let's see. Escapar right here looks like to escape. And, of course, it does mean to escape. Comenzó is from the verb comenzar. Comenzar. Uh, looks like to commence, and what does to commence mean? means to begin. And then funcionar looks like to function, and in reference to the filter, it means like in English we'd say to work, started working again. Uh, then of course, we have ventilador again. Planta is clearly a cognate for plant, which is easy enough. Uh, and then let's see, I had a couple more here. Uh, decidio looks like it's from the verb decidir, which is, means to decide, so that's all, also a cognate. And I think. Oh, and then this last word right here, terminado, is from the verb terminar, which is looks like to terminate. What's another word for terminate? It's to end or to finish. So that's another word that we could look at on that page. So let's take a look at the next page. Okay, so on the following page, we have a bunch more cognates, and there's actually also one false cognate that I'll point out to you as well. So uh, we'll just start at the top here. Oceano clearly is a cognate for ocean. That's easy enough. Escapar, again, easy. Clearly, it's going to be to escape. Uh, this right here, explosión is explosion, submarina is submarine, so submarine explosion or underwater explosion, it could also mean that. Uh, mascara, it looks, you know, in English we use the word mascara for uh, makeup, for women's makeup, for part of their makeup, uh, which mascara means mask, which it kind of makes sense too that mascara would mean mask because when you're putting makeup on your face, it's like you're putting a mask on, kind of, right? 
Uh, let's see, descend hierons from the verb descender, which might make you think to descend, and descend means what? It means to like, you know, go down, basically. Uh, let's see, next one right here is antena, which looks like antenna, and that's what it is, it's an antenna. Uh, let's see, ilumino, looks like it's from the verb iluminar, which is to illuminate or to light up, which obviously that is. There's mascara again. Uh, here's my false cognate, recordo. So the verb for recordo is from the verb recordar, and you might think that recordar means to record, but it doesn't. Uh, recordar means to remember, which it might help you to th think of it like as you're uh, recording a memory to your memory. So I don't know if that helps you remember that it means to um, remember, but uh, anyway, recordar is a false cognate. Uh, just in case you're curious, to record, like record something to a disc or something, is grabar. Okay, over here in the same sentence, we have lenguaje, which kind of looks like language, and humano, which obviously means human, so human language. <clears throat> okay, uh, keep going here. We have, I think, one or two more. Uh, right here, atrapado, looks first from atrapar, which is to trap, so trapped is what that word is. Here's mascara again, and roca looks like rock, and that's what it means. It means uh, rock. So those are all the cognates and the one false cognate I found for you. Um, that's it for this video. Well, so we'll see you next time for part five. Thanks.